Hello again everybody and welcome back. I'm Necromanticer and today we are going to be heading through the now unstormy version of Liam Lois. As you can see, I've changed out my main weapon here. I want to keep things fresh and new and I've got a whole plethora of weapons that I can be using to clear through this. So I am going to be switching out whenever I make an episode. I want to make sure that combat doesn't become too samey with the great sword, the ultra great sword pretty much taking up everything. Seems I forgot this radiant life gem, but it's not a, an important drop, so it's no matter. This malform shell I think is especially fitting given that Faos is from, uh, is from, whatchamacallit, Sholva, where the imperfect were made by Aldia. And this being one of their jawbones, it's 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 really nice and fitting. I could use have used the uh, dragon tooth instead. I think it would have filled the same niche in my armory, but I think the malformed shell won out just because it is a little bit more meaningful to Pharos himself. It's it's from what I believe to be his homeland, and I think that's a really nice touch. It kind of ties everything together, almost. Everything in the build has some relation. Pharos was a wanderer. He was abducted and brought to Aldia's keep where the Chaos Glove originates from Navlan. Sanctum Knight leggings, of course, are from Sholva, along with the Malformed Shell, which again, also in Aldia's keep. The Pharos Mask being his own creation. Some people believe that it's found on his corpse, but that's completely unsupported. All we know is that it's one of his creations, and Faros made a lot of different things. There's there's no specific details tying it to Faros himself, other than he made it, which, again, made a lot of things, so that doesn't really support the notion at all. At best, it's a wild theory. At worst, it's completely unsupportable fan fiction, and I tend to judge it as the latter, so I'm not going to bring that up too much anymore. Oh, and of course the Sanctum Shield being from Sholva as well. I decided to really go all out with the setup here. I think the nice slashing attacks of Dark Drift will do me nicely. There we go. Beautiful. It doesn't have a lot of durability, but I think that it's actually going to be a pretty nice weapon for taking on the shield wielding uh, spear crystal golems. I'm gonna call them crystal golems. Uh, they could very well be soldiers of Lamb Lois, but at this point, I think that the corollaries uh, point to them being crystal golems in the same vein as the crystal soldiers from uh, the Duke's archives in Dark Souls 1. Because again, while I don't believe that it's a direct a direct copy, like I don't believe we're actually in An Orlando. I still believe that pretty much everything was taken wholesale from An Orlando. Whether on purpose from the devs just to make the areas look similar, or because it's trying to say something about the cycle, and perhaps the rest of Lordran is also incarnate somewhere here in Drain Lake, the continent of course, because of how the cycle works or not. I, it, again, I don't know what they're trying to say about L.A.M. Lois and the connections with Dark Souls 1, but I'm pretty set in my understanding that it is different than An Orlando from the first game, but at the same time it is very much a corollary to and related to. So I don't think they're entirely separate, but neither do I believe that they're entirely the same. I think there's certainly some, whatchamacallit, shenanigans going on with the whole cycles idea. It could be that whichever continent the first flame is on at the time is the one that manifests all this good stuff going on here with Alayam Lois and Orlando hybrid and just the entire chosen undead cycle in the first place. Got some lovely weapon swaps going on here. It's treating me very nicely. Quite happy. This is exactly how the build is supposed to go down. Just 
constantly switching weapons to whatever is most appropriate at the time, and I think it's going over quite well. Of course, the massive blunt club is very handy to take on the masses of the soldier-type enemies, but it's there, you still find a use for the bastard sword and the dark drift as well. Come on down. No worries. Quap, quap. That's her taken care of. I want to grab the chests that are available. Oh, pancaked. So sorry. Any sort of pancake weapon is very, very useful in PvE just because you can pretty much nullify an enemy's ability to fight you with a single predictive R2. And that's exactly how I'm using it, so you, you can see just exactly how effective it is. Whap. I believe a jumping attack should take him out. No. Uh, the inputs were not with me, but no matter. It worked none the same. Nonetheless, all the same. <laughs> I hate it when I mix up little sayings like that, but say la vie. Let's grab up all these chests. The sorcerer's is bleh. the sorcerer's twin blade might be a weapon that I bring in on this build, but I don't think I'm gonna need it since I've already got my sanctum shield to act as a catalyst for everything, and I think it would add a lot of unnecessary weight. Let me check exactly how heavy it is. Yeah, ten in order to replace an item that only takes up three, I believe? No, even less two is a very poor idea in my opinion, especially because I'm I'm very restrictive about my weight. I don't like to be very heavy. The fact that I'm over 50% right now is eh, suboptimal in my opinion. I like to, let's see what recollection does. And I should not have cast that in his face. That's just me being a little bit over, over ready. Okay, let's see if I can get them. Oh dear, I did not choose my fight wisely. One more. Okay, that still didn't work. I'm pretty low on, oh god, there we go. Oh, humbug. Fighting in hallways is so difficult for most weapons, and I just did not choose a good setup for this kind of engagement. I, it's really my own fault, but I did not set up for that properly. But anyways, I need to come on through here. As I was saying, I don't like to be at 50% encumbrance. I like to hang around lower 40, upper 30, just because of the increased stamina regeneration as well as, there we go, Bastard Sword's beautiful for taking on these groups. Even though I'm swinging through corpses, I'm right near the end of this run, and there's a bonfire right there too, so I don't need to be too particularly worried. Let's get up. You see, I don't think the ones with the masses of crystals on their back can be backstabbed. I'm just, uh, it's, it's frustrating because I, I keep flip-flopping back and forth. This guy is actually designed to show you that you can now activate a torch, now that LA and Lois is no longer frozen over. But I think anyone who is really paying attention to the torch mechanic in the first place could make that, make that connection on their own. I don't think that was something that they really needed to get across, but I don't know. It feels like hand-holding. It could be said that it's nice that they're making sure that the player understands certain mechanics, because... That's something that Dark Souls does kind of poorly in comparison to other game franchises, but at the same time, it's that self-discovery that is so great about it. Speaking of self-discovery, they really messed up the hidden walls in the DLCs. The ones that actually head on into a solid wa rock wall are completely borked because they're, the outline is incredibly stark. Like you can spot that from a mile away. And the ones that are sort of breakable, are, again, are very easy to see because of certain lighting problems. Namely, the same ones that make Mimics a joke here in L.A.M. Lois. The Mimics are all discolored. It might be the same sort of lighting issue. Oh, dear. I, you know, in retrospect, I really didn't want to take a fight in the hallway. I already established that my weapons are not ideal for that sort of fight, but forget it. 
I'm at the end of the run. I'm a little bit proud. I'm going to finish him off. Got to grab that. I got to grab the key over here. And then we can head down to the bonfire and heal back up. I think this would is going to do best here, considering it's quick, nice counter damage. Allows me to come in and lay some heavy damage on them. Uh, maybe... Maybe the Bastard Sword. Uh, they look like they do similar damage. So, I don't know. I'll go with the whatever one I really feel like at the time. No need to tie myself down. That gets me the Garrison Key. Which, you know, honestly, I'm not going to use it. I've completed the challenge area on several other characters. And I never want to go there again. I believe it's the worst level that FromSoft has ever created. And I hate them for it. It is the absolute worst thing that they've ever made in my opinion I just cannot stand to play it it's not worth my time or my effort going through that godforsaken hellhole and it's just it's it's a bad area and I'm not gonna play it I understand that you know it's a challenge area it's supposed to be difficult but that's no excuse for completely uh, just forgetting to create a level all it is is a divot in the ground filled with snow and a few sparsely populated buildings. And it, it feels like an insult. Like, they expected that to be enough to constitute a level, and it's just not. It is poorly designed, and it's hidden under the guise of minimalism. And I can't abide that. It's It feels offensive to me. I just really hate what they did with that, and there's nothing I can do about it except complain, so I guess that's what I'm going to default to. I guess that's what I'm going to default to. Time to head on back, and now we're going to take an elevator down and start picking up some of the Alayim, the knights of Alayim Lois. There are three dotted round and I only managed to find two on my blind run, so I'm going to make sure I grab all three this time, just so I can show on camera that, yes, indeed, I did manage to find all of them. No need to worry. I, I've, I've got them all. Oh, that didn't kill him. But this did. Are you coming up? There we go. One and two. Come on around, and that's dead. Beautiful. Just beautiful. I've got a spear guy coming up to my left that I'm going to keep an eye on. Not a spear guy, but, you know, they might as well all be spear guys. They're using rapiers, and those are just as bad. There can be no excuse for any of them. Come on over here and... Oh, God. I messed that up. Let's, let's take that on properly this time. Get a roll behind and a nice little backstab. Not have to deal with his shield or spear at all. And one final soldier guy before I head on to the broad expanse that I'm just going to run through. From here on in, it's a pretty straight shot to the elevator. And everybody in my path can be just completely ignored. The dogs can't catch up to you. I've already picked up all the items around here. And so I can just run straight on through. Ignore all these enemies. Run to the elevator. And as soon as I'm in that building, I'm completely safe. Everybody's going to try and swing at me as I'm passing through, but there's not really a whole lot they can do about it. I can just drop right on down, and I'm home free. Now, however, I get to face the wonderful, fun little enemies that are the little ice bunnies. The little Sonic Abominations down here. Hopefully I can get one-shots. That is going to be my saving grace. Yes. Yes, I can get one-shots if I'm two-handing the Bastard Sword. Which means this thing is pretty much going to get a one-shot on whatever it does. And I think that I can get a two-handed strong attack one-shot with this Dark Drift. Grab that. Yes, indeed, yo. That is... Beautiful, that is exactly what I wanted to see. Running around them is pretty much the, your best idea you can have. There we go. They have difficulties turning, and so long as you're 
not moving in a straight direction, you can get around them with uh, relative ease and from there deal with them in whatever manner you see fit. So long as they're not charging at you, you can pretty much choose how you engage. Right now I'm trying to lure that spellcaster down here and he seems to be caught on that edge somewhat. Hopefully having him actually cat yeah there we go he just fell. Now I can face him over here. Let's see oh I messed that one up but I get the follow up because he was taking too long. Nope oh dear. I hate that AoE. It's an interesting idea but I don't like it. Backstab? Yes. Backstab for the kill shot. Invader banished. It feels really scummy that they don't actually warn you with an invader message about the Maldron clone standing up guard waiting for you, but, uh, you know, I can deal with it. <sighs> I just, I just hate Maldron in general. I think he really exemplifies all that's wrong with the new invader. Come on. There we go. With the new style of invaders that have infinite poise and try to emulate players just for the sake of it. One more? There we go. Oh no. Oh no. This is this is all bad. Okay. Let's get out of the way of this guy. Oof! Jesus. One twice. Three times the charm. Let's get him taken care of. And now I can deal with the caster at my leisure. He's going to be plinking away up there pretty much the entire while I'm here, but there's nothing he can actually do that's going to threaten me anymore because I've got like seven Estus, and he's he, he, the best he can do is that, which hits me a few times, and even so, I can see it coming a mile away. Before I take on Maldron and his brood, I'm going to come over and tag the bonfire so that I don't have to worry if I mess up, which is probably going to be the case because, you know, it is Maldron. I am kind of glad that I have the Dark Drift available to pierce through his Great Shield, but I'm not sure exactly how much that's going to come into play. Right off the bat, I'm just going to want to get as many backstabs as he'll allow me, and from then on, he's probably just going to book it, and it's going to be a little bit of a Benny Hill moment to just chase him all over the place. Almost half health. That's that's good. Did I get him? I did get him, so I brought him below half health, which is nice, but I think he managed to squeeze off a heal wherever he... What? Where did he go? Okay. I can pursue him down there, but I want to kill this witch tree phantom thing first. So long as I don't open up that lever to open up the gates, Maldron is stuck in here with me. Kind of like... Rorschach with all the prisoners, so it's oh dear. It's okay. I can I can manage. Oh, humbug, the tracking. Real people don't track like that. That's another thing that's just completely BS. I have had a lot of fun using lances before, and they do not work that way. They just don't. Come on. I, I basically need the backstab to do legitimate damage. And now I can see what this does for... Oh, come on! How does that blocking with the lance actually manage to deflect Dark Drift? It's just... It's silly! Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stop. Maldron, please. Oh, boy. What? You're kid. Oh my god, he drops Royal Swordsman armor. I mean, I didn't know that. It's it's kind of cool. But what a big F you. You deal with literally the worst phantom in the entire game. I cannot think of a worse phantom anywhere else than this Maldron right here. The Maldron that can be found in the uh, Iron Keep, he's at least bearable because you can do a bum rush to the end of the zone and do everything important that you need to do and then take him out in your leisure. But this guy is the absolute worst phantom because he will take you on a wild goose chase if you are not incredibly devout about following him up, so... 
he, he gets no sympathy from me. And it, it really just makes it all the funnier that he drops a... <laughs> a bit of the royal swordsman armor. Like, who who is at this point in the game is really looking for that? It's just... It's, it's, it's so funny that it hurts. Let's see if this guy is as weak as I remember him. Eh, it looks like he's gonna take a bit of damage, but... It's kind of funny. The original of this guy, the Covetous Demon, is actually surprisingly weak to Blunt. And that's what I was looking for with the Malformed Shell. But it doesn't look like that is a... Uh, that Tail Whip at the end really keeps snagging me. But it doesn't look like that's a trait that he shares. Blunt damage doesn't seem to be particularly effective. Instead, slashing damage, which makes a heck of a lot more sense, seems to be the way to go with this guy. Just keep swinging. Get him over to the side. This should be it. After I get... There we go. And he drops the Ivory Warrior Ring, which I, I haven't tried yet, but I, I want to. It sounds like it's a cool idea for a ring. A ring that allows you to damage the opponent's stamina. I brought... I think I actually mentioned it on the footage that I lost, but it really seems like... It could do interesting things with stun locks, you know, as a matter of uh, damaging their stamina to the point where they can't roll away. But I don't know, and I haven't tried it, so at this point it's all just speculation and kind of ideation on how cool that could be. Um, you know, let's let's play it safe. Tag the bonfire once to get all my stuff back and then head on further in, after I unlock the shortcut. Take that. Okay, I am all rested up and ready to go. I can run... Oh, here we are. I can run straight through that little shortcut that I opened up and head right on through with the rest of the run. I'm going to be taking on some of the golems and a few more of those evil spike bunnies that have shown up before, but they shouldn't actually pose that much of a threat. Something that I learned from the comments of my blind run was that you can actually damage these golems while they're not yet animate. Furtive Cutlass, one of the people who's really, really active on the Reddit board for Dark Souls 2, actually dropped me that little hint, and oh my goodness, is that helpful. He he did say it specifically in regarding the uh, little group. Oh dear. There we go. The group of them surrounding the curved Nil Greatsword, but it works just as well down here and goodness is it a lifesaver it means that you just have to take on that many less enemies and that that is a really big thing here in dark souls less enemies yes please oh dear i really like what they did with the uh, golems move sets it's it's very interesting it keeps you guessing it's never just a for sure they're gonna swing next or they're gonna follow up or they're just gonna let you go it's it it is very reactive and you kind of have to be paying very close attention otherwise you get punished and that's the kind of enemy design that I like not invaders with infinite poise that will just do terrible terrible things to you unless you cheese them in a very specific way Ugh. so yes these golems really good really good enemies Really well designed. I like them. Let, let's keep enemies like that. Let's work on that in the future. Let's not make massive, incredibly fast ponies with broken hitboxes and stick them in the worst arena of all times. Let's let's not do that. Instead, make enemies that are difficult to predict, but slow and lumbering, fair, punishing. All these sorts of wonderful adjectives that are used to describe the better parts of Dark Souls. Let's keep doing that. 
instead of making terrible non-levels with terrible... Oh, dear. Can I survive this? I think I can. Oh, that actually steals souls. That's the first time I've been hit with that, so... That's a new one on me. And did it actually heal him as well? I think it did. That's a very interesting attack. D yeah, see? He just holds his arm there for just that perfect amount of time to keep you guessing. Nope, I'm faster. He was gonna follow that up, I think, but I managed to bring my weapon to bear before he did, so I came out on top, obviously. I am the main character, I am the protagonist, so it is my right, but at the same time, they really make you work for it, which I like. That's that's one of the reasons I like Dark Souls. It's, it's fun, but challenging. It's always a display of skill. There we go, take him out. One, two, and three. I think I can one-shot them with the backstab, but if I just keep bashing them in the face, it works just as well. Let's... The, a really interesting way to take out these guys is to grab their attention and then lure them over to this edge. I completely messed that up. It's supposed to go like that, but I swung a smidge too early and paid the... Did the other one fall off an edge? I think so. Fantastic. That completely negates my mistake there. And lets me get right back to clearing through because I am getting a little bit close on the top. Oh dear. If I get hit one more time by a real solid swing, I'm dead. But, oh, hang on. Why is he not dead? Why is he not dead? Sometimes, uh, something I've noticed is that sometimes enemies take a like a reduced tick of critical damage and I don't know what exactly affects it. I've heard it said that it's frame rate but I'm holding a solid 60 right now so I don't know what exactly is going on with that. It, it could be frame rate and it just fluctuated when I wasn't specifically looking at the counter but eh, I'm dubious. Suffice it to say. This right here, one of my favorite bits of the DLC. I just think this is so funny. This is an interesting and really rewarding and nice touch. It changes the level. It provides a little bit of interactivity. And while it's just completely preposterous, it's it's a cool little touch. It's a very interesting feature, and I like it. It rewards you for just being a curious individual, and I, I enjoy that in Souls games. All sorts of exploration and whatnot, but uh, this night has been released. That's one of three that we need to get around to freeing, and you can join me next time to get that all sorted out. Thank you so much for watching. I really am having a blast going back through this DLC, and I hope you'll be joining me in my next video. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.